All right, so we're live out here at the Ace for Porsche night. And you know, sometimes you just have to keep the faith. In the Porsche Brotherhood, that's what I always say. You got to keep the faith that no matter what, you're going to be taken care of. And that's what happened tonight. We had a guest lined up for the show. We normally have two guests. And this month I decided I'm going to have one guest and we're going to take our time and have fun. Well, uh, John Teshi with BGB Motorsports up in Ormond Beach was going to join us. He'd been racing all weekend out at Dakota, at, at Dakota in Texas. Got in in the middle of the night last night and then took up ill and just couldn't make it. I talked with him this morning. He's like, Brian, I'm so sorry, but I just can't make it. Will you put me in another slot next time? I said, absolutely. I totally understand. Hey, it happens. So then I was thinking, okay, what am I going to do tonight, right? So I said, got to keep the faith. You got to keep the Porsche faith. And sure enough, I came out here and I met Sasan. And uh, he was gracious enough to bring his car on here. And this is a special car, a GT2 RS. So this is it. I mean, this is this is an amazing piece of machinery from Porsche, right, Sasan? That's right. So how long have you? Well, I'm going to back up. I got I got to remember that tonight marks our first anniversary on Porsche night here from the Ace Cafe. Congrats. So isn't that awesome? That's awesome. So That's so great. you know you're you're on I the show be with part of the uh, the anniversary. Okay. Well. Thanks for saying yes. Yeah. So, you know, Sasan said, hey, I'll go on the show. I'll bring my car on. So we're here. So let's talk about this a little bit. Um, before we get into the car, okay, I want to know a little bit more about you and, and where all this car stuff started with you. Um, you know, maybe it didn't even start with Porsche. You know, maybe it started with some other car. Like, we, like car guys, we all have our stories. Like, what was the first car? What, you got, what got you interested in cars? So maybe tell us a little bit about that. So what was... What uh, what got you interested in cars, or maybe what was your first really cool car that you had? Sure. Uh, my very first experience with cars was actually with a Porsche. My dad was this flamboyant uh, guy who spent uh, all of his money on luxury stuff. And he, I remember like it was yesterday, I was 10 years old when he um, drove in into our driveway with a 356 Speedster, a 1957 Speedster that he had bought, actually traded with a friend of his who had driven the car from Germany all the way to Tehran, Iran, which is where I was born. And so that was my first experience with cars. I, I remember sitting in that car and, and my dad telling me about Porsche because I felt that it was not the most attractive car there was, because he had a BMW 2002 TII, which I loved. And then this monstrosity comes in, but but Porsches is, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's more than a car. It's, it's not even an experience. It's, it's like a um, epiphany, you know? You sit in the car and you go, wow, this is, this car is something different. This is not a car. It's not about the leather. It's not about that large steering wheel. I just fell in love with the car. And so um, ever since, I've just had this affection for BMW, uh, for, uh, sorry, for Porsches. Porsche. And so my first Porsche was in, uh, in 2000, my first, my first 911. And I have to admit, I, I've owned nothing but 911s, and that's what I love. And I had the opportunity recently to... Um, to get an allocation for the GT2 RS, and I was thrilled. And so we um, we sat down with uh, with the guys at Porsche of Orlando and built the car. And uh, I couldn't be I couldn't be happier. This car is a monster. It well, really is. Well, you know, first of all, it's an honor to be able to get an allocation of a GT2 RS. That's right. That's right. A right. Absolute right. honor. I I feel blessed. Yeah. I mean, is. I'm, a, I'm a born again. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it is. It's a true Porsche honor. It yeah, really is. Right. For folks that don't know, I mean, this is this is a very exclusive situation. Very exclusive. And the cars are fantastic. So, all right. So, 1957 Speedster in 2002. So, uh, this kind of rings true to me. So, I was in school at the University of Florida. Great uh, school. Great school. Okay, go Gators. Go Gators. All right, That's brother. Right. All right. <laughs> okay, cool. We just learned something new. Okay, so I was in. I graduated in 1987. And in my final year, I came to know a guy by the name of T. Comer, and he was a roommate of mine, and he had a red 2002 BMW. And I was driving my first Porsche at the time, which I still own today, a 1975 914. 
Wow. Okay. So that's kind of cool that there's a linkage there with your early memories of that's cars right. yeah. and Porsche. And then the other linkage that we have, it's, a, it's just, it's incredible how all this stuff comes together. For folks, if you, if you look very closely in the background of our shot here, you can see Sasan's GT2 RS, but in the, oh, he left. <laughs> Ken left. There was a 356 right behind us. Yeah, Ken Schultz had his, yeah, he left. He's like, he's out of here. All right, all right, geez, he's right over our shoulder. But anyway, there was a 356 just here a little bit ago. So that's kind of cool. All right, so 57 Speedster. 2000, you get your first 911. Was it a was it a 2000 911? It was a two. two it was a 911 Carrera Coupe. Okay. And it was silver. Yeah. And classic, uh, classic Porsche color. Classic, classic Porsche color. And to be honest with you, I didn't build a car. Somebody had ordered the car and had come in, and I went into just look around, and I fell in love with the car. I drove it, and then I bought the car. And uh, I had the car for a couple of years, and then I I switched into a Carrera S. And progressively, I got worse. So wait, yeah, no, you didn't. My wife puts it. It, it I wasn't worse. <laughs> I pro <laughs> according to my wife, I I need to be examined because I I go to sleep thinking about Porsches. I get up thinking about Porsche, especially now since last year that I kind of semi-retired. I constantly think about Porsches, and so. I have to be be very honest with you. I'm very honored to be to be able to drive a car like this because it's it's a it's a piece of art. Yeah, yeah. It's like a Picasso. It's yeah. like a Rembrandt. Yeah. I mean, it, it. I just sometimes I just walk into my garage and I look at this car and I go, you know, just kind of pinch myself. Yeah. You know. So. Well, so it's funny you're saying all that because. Um, I know we spoke earlier and I went over to Porsche Orlando and saw your car when it first came in and I was walking around it and looking at it for probably and you can ask you can ask Teddy probably 40 minutes just <laughs> looking at it because I had never seen one in the flesh that's right that's okay right. Yeah. so now you know Teddy has been out here and uh, have brought cars out from Porsche Orlando you know uh, early on over the course of last year I have since joined the team at Porsche South Orlando, so now we have another dealership Congrats. here in town. That's Thank you. Dealership. So yeah. it's you know it's a, it's like a dream come true for me uh, to be actually representing the brand that you know I've been around. For me, the Porsche thing started in 1973. Wow. For me, okay. Was it, was it, yeah, it was the 914? Well, it didn't start with the 914. Right. So what actually got my attention with a with a Porsche was not an actual car. It was a slot car on a on a on a slot car track that I was given for Christmas, wow. and one of the cars was a 917 Porsche, and it was That's the RC Cola 917 Can Am car. Wow. Okay, so when I saw this little car on a slot track, I thought that has got to be the coolest shape of a car I've ever seen, and ever since then, I've been just like you, infected with Porsche. I got my first one in 1983. Uh, I was in my first year of college, and I met a woman in a class that was taking some studies. And uh, we were studying together one night, and it was late. I walked her to her car, and we walk up to this 914 with a for sale sign in it. And I said, is this your car? And she said, no, this is my husband's car. Oh. And I said, okay, cool. I said, it's for sale? She says, yes. I said, well, what does he want for it? And she says, I have no idea. I said, well, will you find out from him and tell me when I see you in class on Thursday? So she did. We got the price. I went to my dad. I didn't have money. My dad loaned me some money. I worked for him in his business, and I got my first Porsche in 1983. What an incredible story. So, isn't that pretty cool? So, Tops my story with the, <laughs> oh, with the 356, that, but, but, I mean, but it's a good story. A so story. that's where it all started for me, and um, and it's you know it's just been in me ever since. So your first one was this 2000 Carrera. What happened after that one? So I um, my next car was a 2002 uh, Carrera S. So you stepped it up a little I bit. Stepped it up a little bit, <laughs> and then I drove that for a year, and then bought a 2000. Three 
Carrera S cab. And I had that car till 2008. And then I bought another 911 Carrera S. And then my first turbo was in 2010. And that was my first serious car. Um, and I just, ever since that turbo, I just, I, I just couldn't go back to a regular 911, although, it, you know, it's, but uh, I, I currently have this GT2 RS. Okay. And I also have a 2019 GT3 RS in lizard green. Okay, so can I grow up and be like you? <laughs> and to be honest with you, I have to be very honest. One of the things I'm working on right now with uh, uh, Porsche Motorsports and also Porsche of North America is getting an allocation for the very amazing GT2 RS Club Sport. Oh, so this was just announced recently. Yeah. This is just in the last That's couple right. of weeks, right? That's right. That's right. And, and they announced it in that martini livery. Exactly. Uh, remember, it was kind of a black color with the martini livery. That's right. That's right. Uh, so I got an email a couple of weeks ago, and it said confidential, confidential. Of course. And it was the the unveiling of the the club sport. And so there were actually the poster that that Porsche attached to my email was a silhouette of the car. Oh, just a, just a little tease. Just a little tease. That's right. <laughs> and so, and it said, you know, contact, da 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 and there were some emails, and you know, email links within the email body, and that night, I think I must have written about 10 emails just saying, I want the car, please, I want the car. What do I do to get, get the allocation? I, I want it, I want it. So I finally got the application. I filled it out the other day, and so I'm, I'm hoping that the gods have mercy on me and, and uh, so I can get that allocation. Okay, so what did we say when we opened the show? You just have to keep the faith, keep the faith. right? Keep and the Porsche faith. With you, I, I have to say I don't pray enough and I, and I, and I apologize for that, God. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm, <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm sorry, good okay? With that. I'm, good with that. But I'm a good guy, you know that, right? <laughs> so, but I'm praying every night. I would be too. I would I'm be too. praying every night. I'm saying, in my sleep, my wife says, what's wrong? Get up. And you just said club sport. What does that mean? I just go, don't worry about it. Go back to sleep. <laughs> well, you know what? You know what sounds cool is that you have, I don't know your wife, yeah. but it sounds like she's a wonderful woman who is very supportive of your illness. I, actually, <laughs> oh my illness, yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you, I have to give a shout out to to my wife Kelly who's a wonderful human being a beautiful person inside and out has been extremely supportive and uh, I, 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 I have to say she's, she's been wonderful she's if I ever race this club sport she's going to be sitting right next to me strapped in, into that harness you know you're going to have the GoPro rolling <laughs> and, it, Go and this is <laughs> her face I mean <laughs> no, but seriously. oh that's awesome yeah. you know it's uh it, it is true, you know, the Porsche thing is, it's more than the car. Um, you know, a good friend here locally who is who helped to start the local Porsche club back in the 70s, North Northam, um, you know, he's always said that to me. Um, you know, it's, it's not the cars, it's the people. And then it's the cars. And it's so true, you know, uh, when you talk to people about Porsche, there's just something about it. You can't really describe it. Uh, it's just so much fun, and there is that that community uh, that just it's infectious, you know. And and when you have it inside of you, and that enthusiasm just sort of comes out, it just it spreads. And whoever's around you, they get it, you know. And and uh, and and you draw them in, and it and it's just so much fun, you know. And it's and it's an amazing thing what Porsche has done um, this morning. I had a gentleman come in the dealership, and uh, I saw him about a week ago. He just happened to bop by, and and you know he came in and he had a 2016 Cayman, beautiful car, and he said, "Hey, you know maybe it's time for me to look at something different." And we started to look at a uh, at a Cayenne, and I really thought that's what he wanted. And we walked, and I called down and said, "Okay, we're going to drive a Cayenne." You know, he wanted to drive one. Before we got to the front to, to drive the Cayenne, 
he said, hey, I, I see you only have a few Panameras around here. And I said, well, what do you mean? I said, we've got a lot of Panameras here. I said, they're down around the corner. He goes, what do you mean down around the corner? He goes, this place is crazy. He goes, what do you, what do you mean down around the corner? So I walked him down around the corner, and we came up on this Panamera that was chalk colored. So have you seen the Porsche chalk color? I, I uh, just sold a 2018 Turbo S chalk with mocha interior. <laughs> okay, so I got to share this and, you know, maybe I'll reveal his name in, in another show, but he was, just a, he was just an awesome guy, right? And he walked up to this Panamera and we walked around it and I just told him a couple of things about it. And it's like he wasn't listening to me. It didn't matter what I said. He all of a sudden, he, he got into a, what I'll call a Porsche moment, right? And he was just looking at the car and he just kept looking at it and he's walking around. And, and I just, I felt something that was happening and so I just let it happen. And it, it I'm, no kidding, it probably lasted for about 15 minutes. That he, he was in another world, he, I opened the door, he sat in, he sat in it and he got out, you know, later and he said, you know what, my mom told me one time that if, if, there's, if you see something that you want, just do what you want. Don't settle for something a little bit less. Just do what you want. Do what's in your heart, you know? And I'm like, okay. I said, well, I guess we're driving to Panamera then, right? <laughs> and so he changed his mind and we went for a ride in the, in the, in the Panamera, not the Cayenne. And, and to me, that kind of story just tells it all. You know, it's, there's just something about Porsche. Porsche just has this unbelievable ability to touch people's hearts, to sort of captivate them, to draw them in to their design, to their engineering, to their whole, to their heritage, to everything that is Porsche. And when I saw this happen, I was like, wow, this is amazing. You know, it was just like, holy, you know, holy cow, this is totally incredible. So I hope that he decides to come in and, and get it. Buy the car. You yeah. know, I. You know, who knows if he will or not. He's got a beautiful Cayman. But it was just one of those Porsche moments. So for you, if we had to think about a Porsche moment, other than maybe that speedster that your dad saw, is there another moment that's happened for you for Porsche that maybe is a little bit akin to what I'm explaining that happened to this gentleman this morning? Yeah, so my Porsche moment was when... I got in a golf cart because when my car came, it actually um, it landed in Champion Porsche. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's they they do yeah. some serious business they down do there. Some serious business down there. <laughs> so my moment came when the my contactor at Champion and I got in this golf cart, and he said, "I'm going to show you your car." Okay. So we drove around to this incredible underground parking uh, area and there were four GT2 RSs sitting there waiting to be delivered and he, he took me to this chalk GT2 RS and he goes, there's your car. Oh my gosh. So I have to give you this story because originally that's what I wanted. I configured a car as a chalk car. Okay. But I changed my mind two or three days before the close of the, of the config deadline. And so he played a, a little fast one on me. He took me over to the chalk car. And my Porsche moment was when I actually sat in that car oblivious of the exterior color. Because what really drew me in wasn't the color. It was the lines. The, the, the shape. The... Honest to God, I didn't even notice the chalk. You know, I was that was that was the epiphany I had about what a true vehicle. It's, it's just not something you drive. It's just I can't even express it because I've never I've never owned a Monet or a Rembrandt or a Picasso. But I have to say, that's my Picasso right yeah. here. Well, that was the time when I when I back to what I said earlier when I saw your car. I got sort of mesmerized with it. I was just standing. I was what, and I'll show you the pictures, so you know. <laughs> yeah. so, I'm, so you know I'm being saying. You'll see the date on them. And I just, I just kept walking around it, and I was looking. And and the more you walked around it, 
the more you noticed, you know, the, all the little details. You know, and uh, it, was, it was just incredible. I, I have an idea. I got to share this with you. Okay. And I was going to, honestly, I'm not kidding. I was going to reach out to Porsche and share my idea. All right. So you shared your mystic uh, moment with Porsche, and I shared uh, mine with you. And I have this idea. What if Porsche, along with the Porsche crest, drew this Sufi mystic? I don't know if you've ever seen... I don't even know what the audience, anybody knows what a Sufi is. I've never heard of that. All right. The Sufis are these incredible people who through dancing put themselves in a trance, okay? And they do incredible things. They elevate themselves, okay, off the ground. They stop their heartbeat. These are people who, this is actually true. This is not some made up story. This, these people have been able to reach part of their brain that would actually controls your body these okay. are Sufis these yeah. are mystics what if Porsche drew an emblem of a Sufi okay. or gave an option to people to have that in their interior somewhere I love it it's awesome I want to know more but you you've got me in trance and like I, what is I a Sufi what's a Sufi I'm gonna send you a picture okay. if you Google you just Google a Sufi okay and for your audience you just Google a Sufi you'll see what I'm talking about okay a dancing Sufi it, they dance and they dance and they dance until they go into this trance it's this state of Nirvana you reach this stage and that's really what people this is all about that's this is what is it you're a Sufi without being a Sufi Wow well my wife was a ballerina. This is just wild. This is just Isn't like that incredible? we just meet whatever. What an hour ago we met, right? My wife was a ballerina. I have two daughters that were gymnasts. One that still is a gymnast wow. at the University of Florida. Wow. Um, I took them to the airport at like 4:30 this morning. They're in New York City, hanging out for a couple of days wow, nice. for, to do all the holiday nice. stuff. Nice. Uh, and then I have a niece who also. We're all Gators, okay? So I have a niece who graduated from the University of Florida dance program uh, almost two years ago now. She's living in New York City, wow. following her dream and passion to be a dance choreographer. And she is, you know, she is just ultra creative and just this amazing spirit. So it's so cool that um, that you're bringing this up. You know, this whole, I'm, I'm like, wow, what is a Sufi? You know? And, and we're on this show, we're talking about cars, and like we're off on this tangent of Sufis. Like, what is this all about, it's right? It's about mysticism. <laughs> it's about going into a trance when you see a car like this. So when you, you, yeah. you explained to me your, your client who came today or yeah. whenever he came. At and, and At the moment. And just, and he just lost. Yeah, he did. All sense of reality. He and did. it was mesmerized <laughs> because honestly, and I, you know, look, I mean, we, we kid around a lot about this stuff, but I, I'm really serious about this yeah. stuff just the experience of just sitting in the car yeah. you don't have to own it you don't have to you know it, it doesn't have to be yours it's just being around yeah. something like this it's yeah. like going to the Louvre Museum and looking at Mona Lisa you yeah, know it's just yeah. uh, you don't have to be an art expert to, yeah. to appreciate what beauty and, yeah. and genius yeah, is yeah. all about it is that's yeah. what that's what Porsche is yeah and it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be a GT2 RS right I'm a con or a Cayman anything i mean the lines the shapes it's just just beautiful cars yeah, you know i had a guy here we did a show it was probably six months ago and a guy pulled up in this boxster and it was this it was called i saw the color of it and it was just a very simple boxster and i saw the color and i thought i've never seen this before so i just had to go talk to the guy and it was called Ocean Jade Metallic. What? Paint the sample? I guess it was. So I, I said, I said, where is the guy who owns this car? So I saw him, and, and we brought him over. This was about in uh, April or May of last year. And this color was just, it was just very unique. Come to find out, he won an award up at Works Reunion in Amelia Island that was last March. Wow. You know, for the car. It was kind of like best in its class at Works Reunion. And the car was like so few ever made. I think, God, I'm, 
I'm, I'm, if he's if he's listening, uh, I don't remember his name, but I remember him telling a story how he saw this car, and I believe it was in New York, might have been in, in Manhattan, and he saw this car in the dealership, and he just got mesmerized by the color, and he just had to have it. The, Su the Sufi thing. It was the Sufi thing. thing. <laughs> it was a Sufi thing. So yeah, there's moments like this all over. Okay, so let's. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about the car. So sure. what have you done with this GT2 RS that has just been uh, something that's you know brought so much joy to you? Well, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say I haven't tracked the car. Okay. Um, I haven't done a whole lot with the car, except that I had the car wrapped. Oh, okay. Okay? And the reason for this is I have no plans to sell the car I have no plans to, you know, it's not a business for me, it's just a passion. I plan to keep this car for a very long time. So I wrapped it so I can drive it. And for your audience, listeners, viewers, who have ever driven on I-4 in Orlando, all right? <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an experience on its own. Oh, sure. And so I plan to drive the car. So I've, I've wrapped it, but the car just turned 200 miles. I've had it for, what is it, about seven months, eight months, and, uh, and I'm in the process of actually building a garage where I can keep my cars. I plan to buy more, yeah. and uh, so the car has been sitting in, uh, in the showroom of Porsche of Orlando. So they have been nice enough, Andrew, uh, Teddy, uh, they've been nice enough to, to let me uh, kind of keep the car there so from time to time when I miss it you know yeah. I, I go over there and I sit Fantastic. with Teddy have some coffee <laughs> uh, which by the way you were talking about Porsche community and I, I, I gotta tell you I sometimes I feel like I'm bugging the hell out of this guy because I call Teddy I go Teddy what, what do you what are you doing he goes well I have a couple of deliveries and I can I come over and see you I could, it's kind of like a, a girlfriend that is that doesn't want to hang around with you but I I love the guy, I love the, the people there, and right. I just go sit down, talk with Teddy, yeah. talk about cars, about Porsches, see my car, you know, I just look at it and go, hello, you know, hello. It's, it's safe. <laughs> hello. It's safe and it's all cool. Yeah. That's so, awesome. What, well, that's great. Yeah. So I dropped off my GT3 RS, because I'm wrapping that as well, and I picked this guy up, and so happy to be here. It's my first time at Ace. Really pleasure meeting you. And uh, I plan on being here more often. Well, great. Well, you know what? It, it, we couldn't end this any 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 better than that, right? What's better than that? Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Um, we just meet, and uh, what an awesome time! I just really have enjoyed uh, talking to you about your car. More importantly, talking to you about your Porsche passion and what that meant. And and I gotta go home now, and I'm I'm gonna be googling Sufi. <laughs> And, uh, Google and, uh, <laughs> Google and for and for anybody who doesn't know what a Porsche GT2 RS is, right? Google that, and you'll see just how special a car that Sasan has here, and and uh, you know what a, what a true honor it is uh, to to be able to have one. And so I wish you all the best with this car. Um, I wish you all the best with your GT3 RS, lizard green, lizard green, lizard green, awesome color. Wysock. With Wysock. 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 Okay. Oh, yeah. You so. That car with five. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just awesome. So, I, again, I can't thank you enough for saying yes uh, up, on the, up on the porch of Ace Cafe. Enjoy the rest of the night. Uh, feel free to hang around if you want to hang around in the chair with me. We're going to talk a little bit about some segments that we're going to put up here in just a couple of minutes. So, if you like to hang, you, you're, you're welcome. Well, listen, uh, Ryan, it's my honor. Uh, pleasure meeting you thank you so much for having me and uh, and uh, I hope I wasn't too passionate about my oh my you know, gosh oh about, my gosh you know? no 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 you are you it's fantastic anyway. so so uh, two weekends ago we were at the festivals of speed I don't know if you've heard about that but it's a fantastic event here it's at the Ritz Carlton and I had one of the honors of my life uh, a true Porsche moment that I had interviewing Hurley Haywood, who is the most successful and most decorated sports car driver in American history. 
He's won the 24 Hours of Le Mans. He's won the 24 Hours of Daytona. He's won the 12 Hours of Sebring. And not once, but multiple times. This is an incredible, incredible man. I was uh, fortunate that back, I believe, in the early 90s, about 1991, I worked on a team, uh, a car that he drove at Sebring. And, uh, you know, it was a very cool experience back then. And it was just a real honor for me two weeks ago to be able to interview him. He has a book that was written about his life. And so he, through this book, he's, he's telling his whole life story and, and his and his passion for Porsche and everything. It's, it's an incredible book, but it was a real honor for me to be able to interview him. And so I think we're gonna roll that interview now. And uh, so let's listen in to what Hurley Haywood had to okay, say. Okay, we're here at the Festivals of Speed at the Ritz-Carlton in Orlando, and we have a very special guest with us, Hurley Haywood. So welcome, Hurley. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, we're really excited to see you out here. Now, for all of you uh, who are joining us for the first time, Hurley is just a spectacular force in the Porsche world. He is a five-time winner of the 24-hour at Daytona, a three-time winner at Le Mans, a two-time winner at the 12 Hours of Sebring. If it's a major sports endurance car race, Hurley's won them all, and it's just a, a fantastic career that he's had, and it's a real delight to have him on the show with us today and to talk about some really cool things that are happening with you lately. So tell us about the book and what's happening. Yeah, well, you know, I retired in 2012 thinking that I was going to just kind of sit back and enjoy life, and all of a sudden, I mean, everybody started asking me to do stuff to do things and so I have a hard time saying no and it's been really rewarding for me. The first thing that started was the book. Uh, Sean Trillin was my co-author and basically the book starts from square one from my early life and, and my upbringing in Chicago and then it goes through the years of college, meeting Peter, getting started with him and then through the huge um, success I've had behind the wheel of a Porsche race car. So, it's a really cool read. One of the edicts that I told Sean when we started, what I didn't want it to be a, a, just a racing book. I wanted it to be something that was enjoyable for a non-automotive person to read. And I think it, it accomplishes that. So we have the book, and then at the same time the book started its life, um, Patrick Dempsey came to me and wanted to do a documentary on my life uh, as a racing driver during the 70s and 80s. It keeps me busy, so it's, it's good. Well, that's awesome. You know, it's, it's just great to be out with folks who are like-minded, who love cars, who love racing. Uh, this event just sort of brings all that together, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, it, it, when you this is the first time I've been to the actual to this festival of speed, but when you look at the cars here and and some really beautiful machinery and very expensive machinery, and people just love bringing out their cars and showing their cars, not showing off their cars, but letting people enjoy their cars and and why they enjoy the cars, and those people are willing to share that passion with uh, you know with the public. That's yeah, cool. That, that's what you love to see. You know, it's one thing to have a collection of cars and have them tucked away and all documented, but it's another thing to have them out and available for everybody to share, whether it's be, you know, just looking at them or maybe even jumping in and taking a ride sometime. And I know you've taken a lot of folks for rides and a lot of great cars, and I'm sure that's brought a lot of joy to you, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, at, at Brumos, we, we uh, have a, a new facility that's going to be is in the mist of being built right now in Jacksonville that's going to house all of our collection cars. Uh, it'll be called, you know, I, right now the name of it is just the Brumos Collection, but uh, it's going to be significant. We'll have all these great cars. And the mission is to share those cars with the general public. Porsches that you've owned over the years, is there one or two special cars that really just did something extra for you that uh, you really just enjoyed, or are they all just as special as the next? Well, the beautiful, beautiful thing about a Porsche is, you know, I, I remember, uh, I think it was Dr. Porsche said that when he was asked that question, what's your favorite Porsche, his comment to that was next year's Porsche, and which is, which is pretty safe to say because you know that next year's Porsche is going to be better than this year's Porsche, and Porsche has never uh, disappointed me. They've always come up with fantastic cars. 
I have a 918, which is just the most incredible car you could imagine. Um, you know, I just had a, a, a GT2 RS, which is an amazing car, and the potential of these cars on the racetrack is just awesome, but at the same time, you can pack your bags and drive home after you spent the day at the track. And I just cannot think of any other car that has the capability and the durability to be able to do that day in and day out. I mean, I'm the chief instructor at the Porsche track experience up in Birmingham, and we have all the cars there from the GT3s all the way down to you know, uh, Panameras and Macans, everything. And we drive those cars flat out seven days a week, 365 days a year, and they, they don't miss a beat. So that's pretty pretty a good testimony to the durability of a Porsche. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, we really want to thank you for taking a few moments of your time. I know uh, there's a lot of action going on out here, but, you know, Everyone, I think, who knows you is uh, just excited to be able to read the book and is even more excited to, to see the film when it comes out. So thanks so much for coming to see us. We really appreciate it, Hurley. It's uh, fantastic. All right, guys. Well, okay, so we're back at the Ace Cafe for Porsche night. Hope, hopefully you enjoyed the interview that we had with Hurley Haywood. As I said at the beginning of the interview, it was a real honor for me to interview Hurley and that he gave us his time out at the Festival of the Speed. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever been to that, but I'm with Johnny Bomer now. Yes, sir. And we're at Porsche night, as I mentioned, but Johnny has something that's kind of all in the family with Porsche. Johnny is a guy who has gone really fast. Yeah, pretty cool. and, and I'll let him talk about that, but he's gone really fast in a lot of different cars. But we were just sharing a little bit of a story about a Bugatti run that you had. And for folks in the car passion, I'll say, you'll know that Porsche and Bugatti, there's some ties between that. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. It's a good tie-in tonight for for Porsche and yeah. Bugatti. So Johnny, thanks for coming on. I know someone just wrangled you over here and yeah. got you to come on. So why don't we talk about that a little bit. Tell us about your Bugatti run and, and then we can go into a few other things that you do. Sure, um, we, bring, we bring different individuals out and different teams out to the uh, Space Shuttle Landing Facility Runway and we do straight line aerodynamic testing. And you know we set up different parameters, different lengths. We try different things with the car. Well, we did bring out a Bugatti Chiron uh, uh, Chiron, Chiron, uh, uh, that belonged to uh, Tim Schmidt, the happy hippie, and he brought it out. And, and uh, so far, from what we understand, Bugatti or nobody had gone over 260 in the car. And the runway that we have is 2.7 miles with a uh, 3,000 3, feet left to stop. And uh, we made several passes in the car, and the car ended up hitting 260 and 261 and .6. He almost hit 262. The rev limiter in the car shut the car off at 262. Incredible car. Uh, I was very impressed with how many passes it made. We did have some GT2s there. Um, I've had a bunch of those out at the runway. We've done a lot of testing with a lot of different manufacturers. P1, of course he had his P1 out there. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a pretty rare car. That's one of five made. Um, and we have, I can't say who's out there now, but another similar group. And, um, and they come from all over the world to test out there. And I've been doing the runway testing out there since 2009. So I've got to drive a lot of fast cars. And then, of course, my car is pretty fast as well. You know, it's so cool. When we, this is, so you know, this is our first anniversary for the show. We okay. started the show a year ago, I think tonight. And the guys who started Ace Cafe, you know, they put this place here for guys in the car hobby, guys with car passion. And we're, we're here in downtown Orlando. And Orlando now is becoming, well, not becoming, it's been technology driven for many years, but oh, yeah. it's just growing by leaps and bounds now yeah. uh, with high tech and in many different areas. And, you know, having the Space Center so close by, this yeah. is so cool to hear about this. I have never heard about uh, this this sort of grounds that you it, have out there. It, it, yeah, it's called Johnny Bomer Proving Grounds, but we don't advertise it. We don't bring people in just to go fast. This is not a playground. It's, it's a testing facility, but there are a lot of people that fall into that testing facility category. We have manufacturers. I brought John Hennessy out when he did 270 in his Venom GT. Um, I also build cars. My car is the Guinness World Record holder since two, 2012, and uh, I just recently hit 292.9 miles an hour in the standing mile, zero to one mile. And it's a daily driver. I take my kids to school in it. It's license tag, insurance, air conditioning. I'll drive it up here one day. It's a true street car. It's a Ford GT, 
but um, and I'm sponsored by Gas Monkey Garage, uh, Discovery, and Lucas Oil, and some other sponsors as well that are all been you know pretty helpful. But I built the car, I bought it brand new and took it all apart, and I said I want to be the first guy to go 250. I was the first car to go 250 miles an hour in the standing mile in 2010. And then I set the Guinness World Record at 283 in 2012, which still is a Guinness World Record. And since then, I've gone 293, and hopefully in about three months, I'll be the first street legal car to go 300 miles an hour that's a daily driver. So that'll, be the, that'll break the 300 barrier. Yeah, I was right there, and I had an electronic glitch in my boost controller, so I lost uh, all my boost in sixth gear. I went down to spring pressure. I would have been on the road to about probably 315, and then... I, I build cars for people, so I have people that want me to build them a similar car, so I have to go out and make sure it's worthy and it's safe. Um, five weeks ago, this last Friday, I was at the runway and I was attempting to break 300, and at 282, I had an engine failure, the car caught on fire. We put it out, you know, everything's good, but, uh, and on that Gas Monkey uh, fast and loud show, you'll see my parachute breaks. It took me like a mile to stop. <laughs> Well, that's crazy, but you know what? What makes me feel real good is I saw the happy hippie. I never, I didn't meet him. I didn't know who he was. Yeah. It was kind of at the end of the day at Festivals of Speed. I'm the one that sent him over there. Joe Sabatini is a good friend of mine. The okay. guy that runs set Festivals of Speed. Yeah. I've been at all of Joe's shows since he almost started. He knows my car real well. He wanted me to bring my car, and I said, I can't come, but if I bring you a McLaren and a... Uh, 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 Bugatti, will you buy me dinner? He says, heck yeah. So. Well, jo- I met Joe about uh, four months ago. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and then I had him on our show about uh, three months ago. And, and then he said, hey, why don't you guys come out to Festival of Speed and do some things with us? So we did that. And, yeah, Joe is just an awesome, oh, he's awesome great, guy. He's a great guy. I've known him for a long time, and he's, uh, he's, the, he's the real deal. He's, yeah. he's a great guy. And he yeah. puts on probably the best car show in the, in the top three best car shows in the in the United States. I mean, yeah. Pebble Beach is obviously bigger, yeah. but but he does an incredible job. He does a really good job at Amelia Island. Yeah. Well, it's an amazing thing. It, it's uh, it's 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 you know it's organized, but it's it's more casual. You know, you're not really you know it doesn't have the you know like the Pebble Beach thing. I mean, that's really serious stuff. People oh, yeah. are yeah, you know yeah, they're yeah. they're going down to the end. But this is a little more casual, a lot more yeah. fun. In my view, um, you know, just for a, a, well, a great time. Well, you drive there that day and you go home that day. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. beach is a whole different, different level. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, well, that's really cool. Um, man, what a what a what a neat deal. How did you get started with doing all this over at the uh, proving grounds? You know, I, it it was the, the space shuttle landing facility runway, and um, I was um, I, I had broke 250 in my car and uh, some individuals, some individuals from Pratt and Whitney approached me about doing some alloy development in my car because some of the stuff that I could do, they couldn't get the funding to do because it was too far off the spectrum for some, an alloy called Pandaloy, which was uh, going to be used in the space shuttle for different stuff. So I, I talked with them for a while. I, we made an agreement. I got a license agreement with them. Uh, this was 2010. and. Um, I had already been to NASA and done some straight line aerodynamic testing up there. I approached them in between shuttle things. I said, listen, why don't we talk about doing a program to let manufacturers come out because it's the flattest runway in the world. It's a quarter inch elevation change over three miles. And you can't even do that today. And it's all concrete and it's 100 yards wide. Uh, People come from all over the world to test there and, and partly because I started getting the word out to a lot of the teams and the manufacturers and tractor trailer companies, not just race stuff. And I said, let's come out here because you can get real wind tunnel stuff. When you go to a wind tunnel, you're trying to duplicate what we have on the runway. When you're done out there, you're done. Yeah, that's the real deal. It It was so good that the NASCAR teams that used to come out there, several of them were winning a lot of races, so NASCAR banned it from NASCAR for internal testing. Wow. Well, what what a cool thing. I mean, it's just just amazing that... um, that something like this is right in our backyard it is, yeah. you know and uh just so cool i mean I, I it's you know when when you have something like that um when i saw the happy hippie and i saw him doing this interview and he was talking about the speed run and i'm saying to myself where did he do this yeah and i was just there was one side of me that was just praying that this didn't happen out on the highway somewhere, Correct. you know, that, that it wasn't just somebody who was, you know, going crazy. And I didn't get that sense about him. It, you know, yeah, maybe the happy hippie. He seemed like he was, you know, larger than life and just having a blast. But then I had this other sense about him, too, that 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 he would be doing something that, you know, that made sense and that was responsible. 
while having just an absolutely crazy time, <laughs> you know? And so now I know that he did, and it was an incredible well, place. That's, that, that's the one thing that we really pride ourselves on is trying to get people who really want to test a vehicle to do it in a safe environment. Because the runway is 100 yards wide with still additional 50 feet on each side for the east and west traffic lane, if you spin out, we've had some cars spin out. We've done some testing with Porsche. We had the 918s out there. We've had them spin out. No, nothing happens. They don't go off into the grass because yeah. it's so wild. When you hit the grass, that's when you start to roll. Yeah, right. So yeah. we're all about safety. We have fire rescue. We have tow trucks there. Uh, there's rigor rigorous uh, um, test plans that have to be approved. So like I said, it isn't places where people come to go fast. It's places where people try to figure out what the vehicle's capable of in a safe environment. Yeah. Wow. And, and we do, it's, it's a lot of fun. And if you want to see some of the runs that we do, go to Johnny Bomer Proving Grounds on YouTube. I've got two okay. YouTube channels, Johnny Bomer Proving Grounds and Johnny Bomer Racing. And, um, um, and then I've got Johnny Bomer on Instagram. But you can see the stuff that we do, and you can see the videos of a lot of super fast cars that nobody really even knows we're doing this. Wow. And we put some of the, some of the videos we're allowed to put out. You know, the, it, we're allowed with the manufacturer or yeah. the owners. Yeah. Hippie's a, a great guy, and he doesn't go fast on the street. He's a very safe guy. That's yeah. why he came up there. Yeah. Well, that's so cool. Are your shops in uh, Central Florida too, or? I, I had a shop for years down in West Palm Beach, Florida, and I closed it because I'm pretty busy up here at the runway. We had this runway being used. Oh wait. Yeah, we got a train going by. <laughs> <laughs> we're on the wrong side of the tracks here. Yeah. So we um, we had we we had. Um, um, People that want to come out there, we, we try to bring them out in a safe environment. I lost my train of thought when that train came by, so I forgot oh, what I was talking okay. about. I asked you about your shop, and you said you oh, yeah. down in West no, Palm. Yeah, I had a shop in West Palm for several years, performance fire racing, but uh, but I closed it down. I mean, building for, I did a lot of really fast cars for people, but it's not very profitable. Uh, it's it's a lot of work. It's a headache. And I, I race motorcycles for as a hobby. Uh, for fun, and then I do the car testing here. We're real busy up here at the runway. We do all night testing up here, so we have we have companies that come out there and start at seven at night and go till six thirty or seven in the morning because there's hardly any wind, wow. and they're not going real fast. A lot of these are just trying to figure out what the aerodynamic parameters are because the EPA and the Department of Energy have got really strict tier four level guidelines. They're trying to get the emissions in the fuel economy, and they're really punishing the manufacturers for not being at that level. So yeah. I created this whole program for manufacturers to come out and learn how to get the most out of their vehicles. So that's what we do. But wow. it's not really, it's more of an internal thing. We don't have a lot of people that come out there. Um, uh, they don't even know about it. Yeah. So, so Yeah, well, it's awesome. Well, hey, thanks so much for coming on. This was, this was really fun, you know, and I think this is so interesting for people to hear about. Um, probably none of us will ever get the opportunity to actually see it, but to get the insight into it, like what you're giving us tonight, is really cool. And I wish you all the best with this. It sounds like this is something that's in your heart, that's your real passion. Yep. And, uh, and that's totally cool. That's what we're all about. We like to talk to people about their passion. I've been racing cars and motorcycles since I was a little kid. Yeah. So, I, you know, something. Got to go fast. Yeah, you yeah. Know? that's awesome. Well, thanks, Johnny, so much. Thank it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah it was great. It. All right, guys. So... Uh, so, How are you? good. What do you got going on here, Hank? Well, you know, when we were at the Festival of Speed. I'm seeing what's up next. What, I'm going to tell you. I'm gonna you're going to tell me? Right okay, here. okay, yeah. cool. All right, yeah. cool. All right. Remember awesome. we were at Festival of Speed and you did the interview with Joe Sabatini? Yeah. Well, that's what we're going to bring up next now. We, we kind of surprised you a little bit tonight because we threw somebody in you yeah. didn't know. But what an awesome guest. Oh, I'll tell you what. It's going to be great. Yeah, yeah. But we're going to take, and if you want to throw it to Joe, and you can tell everybody a little bit about him before okay. or after, however you want to do it. Yeah, I'll do it right now. So Joe Sabatini is uh, founder and owner of the Festivals, Festivals of Speed. Speed. This is an amazing event that's held every year at the uh, Ritz-Carlton. He has other events around the country. He's expanding to more areas around the country. And I met Joe about four months ago, and he's just one of those guys that is just so authentic, so, you know, you just have a great feeling about him from the, from the minute you meet him. And he was so gracious to have us out yep. uh, at the Festival of Speed, um, you know, to do some work for him out there. And he was he came on and talked right, a little bit about it. So here's Joe Sabatini. Ritz-Carlton in Orlando, and we have a very special guest with us, Joe Sabatini. 
who is the owner and founder of the Festivals of Speed. So we want to welcome you in. Thank you so much for having us out here. So what do you think? What are your impressions of the day so far, Joe? Uh, we're real happy. We've got about 365 of the most beautiful cars to uh, grace the, the earth here. So we're really happy. It's a beautiful day at the Ritz-Carlton Orlando. It, it's like something was in the cards, right? But the last few days, I've been looking at the weather, and I've been seeing, like, right in the middle part, there's going to be rain chance and all this, and it's just nothing nothing materialized today. So some beautiful weather today. Yeah, well, welcome to Florida, right? I mean, it, every 15 minutes, you get a new forecast. But, but no, we're happy. It's a beautiful day. I mean, just take a look around at all the scenery. We've got, uh, you know, vintage, contemporary, everything you can imagine is here. So. Yeah, yeah when, I, when I drove in this morning, uh, one of the cars that caught my special attention, you know, you see all these cars, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Porsche, all the exotics, but we come around the corner and there is a blue 52, I think, Hudson Horn. And I walk up and I, spe oh, yes. and I speak to the gentleman and his name is Hudson McMurtry. Wow. And he tells me the whole story about the car and it was just a fantastic story. Uh, it's, it's, it's an original car all on the outside, but it has all kinds of modern mechanicals and engine inside. And nice. he, he was a hoot to talk to, it was pretty cool. So you just never know what you're gonna see out here. No. You know, you turn the corner, like, what is going on? Well, that's that's what people like about our show. It's it's really really diverse, as you well know. Yeah. The uh, I mean, we've got two Bugatti Chirons here. We've got 65 uh, GT40 Ford prototype, one of one, 16 million dollar car estimate at auction through Meekum Auction, oh my uh, which is coming up. So you should go out and bid on so it. So was that the blue car? Is it a blue GT40? No, that okay. is the, uh, right, right over here, what we call is Meekum Hill. Okay. Uh, it's like a wedding chapel uh, during the week you know, or in the weekends here at sure, the resort. Sure. Well, we take our most prominent vehicle of every show okay. and we pu pull it right into the chapel there. Oh, that's awesome. 45 minutes ago, the most accomplished sports car in the United States and arguably in the world, five-time Daytona, three-time Le Mans, two-time Sebring winner, Hurley Haywood, joined us on the show. He came over, he was so gracious, he gave us his time. Uh, he talked about his new book, he talked about yes. the, the movie that's coming out, and just talked about you know his passion for Porsche. So it was really kind of cool. It's funny, I asked him the proverbial question, you know, of all the Porsches you've owned or ridden, what's been your favorite? He goes, well, you know, he goes, I like to answer that question the same way that Dr. P many years ago, when asked, what is your favorite Porsche? And he said, this year's my favorite <laughs> Porsche. <laughs> right? So, so the consummate salesman and just, you know, believer in the brand, and so it was really Really cool to have Hurley in here. We've had a, a lot of other folks. Nice. We we had a we had a family in here. They just won best motorcycle of the show. So there's nice. even more diversity with it. Yeah, we have a lot of motorcycles and uh, of course the antique boats on the side. And uh, you know we're getting back into uh, also displaying the offshore power boats. That wow. that's uh, St. Pete show that we do. That's really strong there for a lot of. Uh, they've got some power boat championships there. Right. But um, you know the 918 over there. I'm sure Hurley didn't mind that one. Oh yeah, no he. Actually, when I asked him the question about what your favorite, he goes, well, you know, he goes, I have a 918 Spider. So he wasn't saying that was his favorite, but he mentioned it. So that means something, right? Uh, and then it, it yeah, hard. yeah. And then he deferred to the, you know, to Dr. Porsche's uh, uh, comments. My favorite, you know, um, I love Porsche. And for me, you know, the new cars are awesome and I love it. And I would love to be driving a GT2 RS right now, yeah. right? It's fantastic. Or, yeah. a, or maybe even a GT or a GT3, whatever. But for me, back in the 60s, there's a car that's behind us right now this Dino GT yeah. and along about the same time Porsche had the 904 GTS it's funny I was thinking the same exact car were you really isn't that something just an amazing car just beautiful lines a sexy yeah. car and uh, that just does it for me man they're yeah. just okay, fantastic so cars I agree, I agree. Well, fantastic car and I really appreciate you stopping by I know you got a lot of stuff going on but it's great to talk to you nice. so thanks for everything Joe and, uh, oh yeah all right so hopefully you enjoyed the uh, the little conversation there with Joe Sabatini from the Festivals of Speed. We had an absolute blast with him. So, Joe, thanks again so much for uh, having us out and all the hospitality. You just do an absolutely awesome job, and, uh, you know, we look forward to maybe doing some things with you in the future and maybe coming out to your Festivals of Speed that we have out here at Ace Cafe sometime. So, next up, uh, we have another gentleman who's actually been on the show with us here before, Mike Collins. He is an awesome guy. He's got a fantastic Porsche, a GT3 RS, and we were able to catch up with him at the Festival of the Speed. So, 
Let's roll the interview with Mike Collins. Ian, I noticed you're going around picking out gold medalists. I'm trying. I'm busy trying to find people with gold medals. There's not many around, but Mike Collins, who better to have a gold medal than Mike Collins? Mike, how did you win this? Just by showing, showing up, I think. But luck, maybe, and a damn fine car. So. Mining the GT3 RS with lots of upgrades, courtesy of Driver's Choice Motors, who uh, set up the car perfectly. Carol, how does it feel to be with a gold medal winner? Exhilarating. And have you been between two Collins men before? No, I haven't, but this is nice. Good, I'm glad you're enjoying it. It's a sandwich. No, oh, it doesn't get better than that. So what have you seen? What's the best thing you've seen today, Carol? You, of course. Oh, fabulous. Oh, okay. Am I making you randy, baby? What about cars? What about cars? Have you seen the Bugattis? Oh, yes. The Bugatti. Everything is great. Love it. There's a Bugatti in naked red carbon, which is phenomenal. We'll be putting pictures up of that later. Uh, other than that, it's a fantastic event. Really, people, keep watching. We've got good interviews, interesting people to speak to, and a lot of fun. Keep watching. Tell your friends and click subscribe. Over to you. Now, see, he knows all about cars. I know all about motorcycles. So okay. I'm going to ask you some things about your car. Sure. But he didn't. All right. So tell me about your car. Okay. So it was a 2016. When it started, it was a 2016 GT3 RS, which, in essence, is a perfect car straight out of the showroom. Until you start really wanting to go fast and track it. Because then you want to put sticky tires on it, right? Slicks. But unfortunately, you don't really make a slick the right size yet. So we went with a 19-inch wheel, and in order to have a 19-inch wheel fit on that car, there's the GT2 RS suspension on it, which meant new caster pucks, sway bars, new end links in order to get the right angle, so it's running a 3.4 negative camber on there with slicks, so 295s on the front, 345s on the back, which is a huge piece of rubber. Um, with that, we also upgraded the, the exhaust system, put full race headers, full race exhaust, full titanium, um, so, and then the safety inside, of course, with speed, with braking, you have to have safety, so it's a full race cage, fire suppression system inside, so it's ready to rock and roll. You don't have to answer this, but this is just out of curiosity, because I know when I start working on bikes, it kind of gets a little heavy all of a sudden, you know, you go like, well, I'll do this, oh, no, no, i got to do that. Yeah. You brought the car stock. Yes. Roughly, how much more did you, now he's got oh, no, no. how much <laughs> more did you have to go, just roughly, you don't have to, you know, say lots, little, Oh, what is the old joke is that hey. on the day I die, I hope yeah, she doesn't sell the car for what she thinks I told her it, I'd spent on it, right? So, <laughs> so like the same thing I tell my wife with my bike. <laughs> don't, don't listen to me, how I'm lying. I'll, I'll, I'll $25,000. If it's that fun, don't do it. And second of all, you only go around once in life. Exactly. You better enjoy it while you can. Yeah, you can't take it with you. You can't. And, and if I did, they wouldn't know where I put it anyway. <laughs> Well, I appreciate it. No worries. And you know, he's been on the show before. He's quite the celebrity. Aren't yes. You? Uh, I do have a, an interesting past back in the late 70s and Going early on. 80s playing with a band that was later Wham. So it was George Michael and Andrew Richley. Yes. Yeah, I went so, and pulled it up when we did the interview with there you. There you go. Yep. That was and, nice. and if I, memory is correct, which I know it is, you were the drummer. I was the drummer. See? Again, thank you so much. Keep thank great you. work. Listen, when, when you get ready to sell it, quadruple the price. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. <laughs> All right, so hope you enjoyed the uh, talk with Mike Collins, and I want to say, Mike, if you're listening out there, I just want to thank you so much for coming by and seeing me today at Porsche South Orlando. It meant a lot to me. Uh, I really appreciate everything that you've done and, uh, and that you've come on the show with us and shared your car and shared your passion. So with that, as you heard earlier tonight, we're celebrating our first anniversary with Cycle Fever TV and Porsche Night from Ace Cafe. And I gotta tell you, it's just been an awesome run. Everybody who has been out here to support this all year long has just done an amazing job. We want to thank everybody yeah, here thank for you. doing that, you know, with us. We've had a we've had a great time. And now we want to bring Grumpy into the camera. <laughs> right? Hey. hey, here he comes. Hey, I just want to say one thing. Cycle Fever is not going to be this Cycle Fever because from now on you're the heart, the car guy, and John is going to have your own little setup. All right. So we got to come up with a name for the car. All right. Well, here we go. Here we go. This started last year in November. They said, "All right, you're going to do this." And now we're on another ride. All right. So, so from all of us at Porsche Night and with Cycle Fever TV, we want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas. So. And everybody, as we always say. say 
join, join the adventure, adventure and enjoy the ride. We'll see you next time, guys. Weird, weird.